In this video, I'd like to give you some examples of actually how to use or one of the ways that we use the trigonometric relationships and identities that we um, discuss throughout the course. And so we're going to begin by taking a look at one that's presented graphically. And the instructions say use the angle on the unit circle to find the exact value of each of the six trigonometric functions. And primarily here that means you're going to use the definitions of the six basic trigonometric functions um, for the unit circle in order to answer this question. So you're given a, a graph of a unit circle with an angle in standard position and the point where the terminal side intersects the circle um, is at one half comma square root three over two. And it really doesn't matter which one you begin with, but typically we would begin with um, the sine or the cosine. And so if you'll recall from the definitions, um, the cosine of an angle, the cosine of angle T corresponds to the X coordinate of the point on, that's on the circle, which in this case would be one half. So the cosine of angle T is positive one half. Then if we think about the sine, the sine of angle T corresponds to the Y coordinate of the vertex, or excuse me, of the point on the circle, which would be the square root of three all over two. Then um, third, we have the tangent of angle T. The tangent of angle T by definition is the Y coordinate divided by the X coordinate. So we would have in this particular scenario, we would have square root of three over two divided by positive one half. Now you do actually need to simplify this fraction. It's a division problem. That fraction bar is treated, treated like a division. So if you'll recall to divide fractions, you flip the denominator and multiply. So this becomes the square root of three over two times two over one. You flip the denominator. Okay, and then I notice that I have um, a two. If I multiply straight across, I would have two square root three all over two. And then I have a two in the numerator and the denominator, which will divide out. And I'm left with square root of three over one or simply square root three. So the tangent of angle T is square root three. As you begin thinking about the other three, once you define the first three, cosine, sine, and tangent, you can then use the reciprocal property to find the others. We know that the reciprocal of cosine is secant of t, which would be 1 over x, which formally would be 1 over 1 half. So then if you do that division, you would have one whole. So that's 1 over 1 times 2 over 1, which is simply 2 over 1 or 2. Now I could have gotten the, a little bit quicker by simply just flipping the actual value of X, just flipping it over, finding that reciprocal. Um, then we have for sine, you have the reciprocal is cosecant. And the cosecant of T would be one over Y. So if I flip this fraction, it becomes two 
over the square root of 3. However, you're not permitted to leave um, the square root of 3 in the denominator, so we have to use the process of rationalizing the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3. So I have 2 square root of 3 all over square root of 9, which simplifies to 2 on the square root of 3 all over 3. And then finally, for cotangent, cotangent of angle T is X over Y, or it's the reciprocal of the tangent. If the tangent is square root of 3, or square root of 3 over 1, when you find the reciprocal, which is the shortcut, it's 1 over square root of 3. But again, you cannot have that radical in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply square root 3 in the numerator and the denominator. So I have square root of 3 all over square root 9, which simplifies to square root 3 over 3. And then I have successfully found all of the six measurements. Cosine is 1 half. Tangent is square root 3 over 2. Excuse me, sine is square root 3 over 2. Tangent is square root 3. Secant is 2. The cosecant is 2 square root 3 over 3. And finally, cotangent is square root 3 over 3. So we found all six using the graph and using the definitions for the unit circle. Okay, the next question is actually going to require us to actually use some of our identities and some of the relationships. It says, if sine t equals 1 fifth and angle t is in quadrant 2, find the exact values of the other trigonometric functions. Now, it may help you as you think about this to kind of come off over here to the side and draw yourself um, a small picture. We know that we're going to have an angle whose terminal side is in the second quadrant because it tells us that angle T is in the second quadrant. So if I sketch that in standard position with my vertex on the origin, my initial side on the positive X axis, and it's going to rotate somewhere around so that I'm in the second quadrant. Okay, so this is angle T. And I know that the sine, which corresponds to the Y value, you remember sine corresponds to the Y coordinate. So the point on this terminal side, the Y value I am given is 1 fifth. And then I'm asked to find the other trigonometric functions, which means I need to find cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. And so I have to think about how I can do that. Well, if I know the sine, um, probably the first one I want to try to find is cosine, because typically all of the other relationships are based upon sine and cosine. And so the easiest way to do that is to use the Pythagorean identity that cosine squared t plus sine squared t is 1. Okay, and I know that the sine is 1 fifth. So I would, if I do the substitution into the Pythagorean identity, I have cosine squared t plus 1 fifth squared equals one whole. Do the math. Cosine squared t plus 1 over 25. 1 fifth times 1 fifth is 1 25th equals one whole. Cosine squared t, um, if I subtract 1 25th, I would have 1 minus 1 over 25, which gives me the cosine squared t 
is 24 25ths. And then I need to undo the square. So I'm going to square root both sides. And remember, when you square root something, it could be positive or negative. It's important to realize here that that piece of information that you were given about it being in a second quadrant is going to come into play because in the second quadrant, the cosine is actually negative. Okay, so when I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to have the cosine equals, cosine of angle T equals, and I want the negative square root of 24 over square root of 25, which is going to simplify. Square root 25 is 5 in the denominator. Square root 24 will simplify to 2 on the square root of 6. Okay, so actually what I have determined there is now I know that the cosine or the ordered pair is going to be negative 2 square root 6 over 5 comma 1 fifth. And then I can proceed to find the other um, values. Um, again, it doesn't matter which one we find next. Since I was given sine, I might go ahead and do cosecant of t, which is the reciprocal. If sine is 1 over 5, cosecant would be 5 over 1, which is 5. If I think about the secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, so I would have the negative of 5 over 2 on the square root of 6. Now it does get a little messy here because you do have to multiply both sides by square root of 6. Okay, so you have negative 5 times the square root of 6 over 2 times the square root of 36. So that's negative 5 square root 6 over 2 times 6 because the square root of 36 is 6. And so I end up with negative 5 square root 6 over 12. Now if I could simplify that fraction any further, I would, but I don't believe it simplifies. So this is your answer for secant. Um, I need to think about tangent. The tangent of the angle is the y value over the x or the sine over the cosine. So I would have 1 fifth, which was the given value for the sine, over the negative square root 2 on uh, negative 2 on square root of 6 over 5. Okay, that's a division problem. So then I've got to do the basic um, math and do the division. So I would have 1 fifth times 5 over negative 2 square root 6. I can then divide out the 5's because I have a 5 in the numerator and a 5 in the denominator. So that gives me 1 over, and I'll put the negative in the top, 1 o, negative 1 over 2 square root 6. But then, as always, we got to rationalize the denominator. You never leave a radical in the denominator. So if I do the rational, rationalizing of the denominator, I have, let's see, times, times square root 6 over square root 6, which gives me the opposite of the square root of 6 over 2 times 6, which ultimately becomes the opposite of square root of 6 over 12. And so that is the value of the tangent, is negative square root 6 over 12. And then finally, we need the cotangent. The cotangent is cosine 
over sine or the reciprocal of the tangent, which would be the opposite of 12 over the square root of 6. But here again, I've got to rationalize that denominator. So I'm going to multiply by square root 6, square root 6. So I have negative 12 square root 6 over 6. Now it'll simplify a little bit because negative 12 divided by 6 is 2. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So I end up with negative 2 square root 6 over 1 or simply negative 2 square root 6. We don't normally write a 1 in the denominator of the fraction. So we have actually found all five of the other trig values. We actually have all six because we were given the value for sine. But again, you're applying all of those um, different identities and formulas as we go. Okay, so let's take a look at one more. This one says if cosine t is negative two thirds and angle t is in quadrant three, find the values of the other trig functions. So again, it may help you to think about and go off to the side and kind of think about what this angle would look like if we draw it in standard position, which is the assumption we make that it's in standard position with the vertex on the origin, initial side on the positive x-axis, and it's going to rotate to somewhere inside the third quadrant. And the point on that side, the cosine, which is the x value, of the ordered pair would be negative two thirds. Now I don't currently know the y value. Okay, so then I got to go back and try to find, ideally find sine as the first um, value that I find. And again, I can achieve that by using my Pythagorean identity that cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. In this case, I know that the cosine is negative 2 thirds squared plus the sine squared t equals 1. Let's see, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 3 times 3 is 9 plus sine squared t equals 1. I'm going to subtract 4 ninths from either side so that I have sine squared t equals one whole, which would be 9 over 9 minus 4 ninths gives me 5 ninths. And then I need to undo the square. So when I undo the square, I'm going to square root both sides. And again, you have to think about at this point, is it going to be positive or negative? Well, remember you're in the third, the terminal side is in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, the value for sine is negative. So sine t is going to be the negative of the square root of 5 over the square root of 9, which simplifies to square root 5 over 3. So the sine of the angle T is negative square root 5 over 3. So now I have the ordered pair. And again, I can then begin to find the other trigonometric relationships. Again, it really doesn't matter which one I do next. Um, since I was given cosine, I could do secant. The secant of T is the reciprocal, using the reciprocal identity of the cosine. So that would be negative 3 over 2. I just flip the value. That's the idea of a reciprocal is flipping it over. Okay, um, then I could do um, cosecant. Okay, because cosecant 
is the reciprocal of the sine. So I would have negative 3 over square root 5. But then I do need to simplify that. Okay, so I'm going to do times square root 5 over square root 5. So that's negative 3 square root 5 over the square root of 25, which simplifies to negative square root 3, or excuse me, negative 3 square root 5 over 5. And that's the value of your cosecant. Then we're down to, whoops, we're down to tangent. The tangent using the quotient identity. Okay, we're going to use the quotient identity that the tangent is sine over cosine, which would give me negative square root 5 over 3 divided by negative 2 over 3. So I have negative square root 5 over 3 times 3 over negative 2. My negative, well, two things. My 3's in the numerator and the denominator will divide out so that I have negative square root 5 over negative 2. Remember that a negative divided by a negative is an overall positive. So overall, I have square root of 5 over 2, which represents my tangent. Once I have the tangent, I can then use my reciprocal identity again, that the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, so that I would have 2 over square root of 5, but then I need to rationalize the denominator. So I have square root of 5 over square root of 5. So I have 2 square root of 5 over square root 25 equals positive 2 square root 5 over 5, which gives me the value of the cotangent. Now this is just one way that we actually use those relationships and identities, but you need to become familiar with um, really your Pythagorean identities, your quotient identities, your, and your reciprocals so that you're able to use them to help you solve problems.